Well, given that the audio recording that I was scheduled to do of my new fourth edition of NLP at Work has been postponed because I needed to be in the studio in London for um, a week. And that's just not practical at the moment. Um, I thought, well, in the meantime, um, I'll read the third edition. And so it may be an opportunity for those of you who have um, studied NLP, read the book before, to hear it. Because I thought, well, I'll read it and I'll make some comments on it at the same time. Um, it could also be good practice for me. They kind of know what I'm in for when I go to read the fourth edition when it's ready. So, um, so if you know of anybody that would like to learn an LP now in this format, then here's an opportunity. So, I'm going to start with the preface, although I think the my preface to the fourth edition, which I might read at a later point, um, uh, is quite different. Um, although I did write it before the, uh, this pandemic. However, I'm going to stick with the third edition um, and I'll give you my comments as we go. I might move on to the first chapter and see how it is. So, it's over a decade since I wrote the first edition of NLP at work. It's travelled, so now actually, is it nearly over 20 years since I wrote the first edition, which is incredible. It has travelled the world since then. And it's available in 14 languages, well, actually it's now about 28. I have followed in its footsteps to the US, Turkey, Madagascar, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Portugal, Belgium, France, Canada, Australia, and most especially today, India. The title NLP at work is deliberately ambiguous. NLP works in all contexts, in business as in the home in relationships with others as much as in relationships with oneself, in the world of marketing, IT and finance, just as in the arts, sports and leisure. I pioneered the use of NLP in business and writing the first edition of this book was instrumental in this, as I sought to make it accessible to people in business as well as in life as a whole. And it seems that it has long since achieved that goal. In the 20 years, I'll say it's now 30 odd, since I first heard the term neuro-linguistic programming, it's become the core of my work and my life. I couldn't have predicted the way my life would unfold when I stumbled across it. I'm really lucky to do what I love, celebrating excellence through my training, talks, coaching and writing. I've studied and learned from many models of excellence, both famous people such as Brian Keenan, who was a hostage in Beirut, Heston Blumenthal, who was a top one of the, owned the, what was voted as the uh, best restaurant in the world. And so Paul Boateng, who was the first black uh, minister in parliament. And the, some people not so famous, such as the father of one of the SOS children's villages, uh, home to many children orphaned or abandoned in India. And an 82 year old cycling veteran who's still winning races and cycling. 200 miles a week, no matter what the weather. I coach many leaders in business, and more importantly, I learn from them all. And I just coach people in all walks of life now. So what's new? And this was, what was it, 10 years ago? <coughs> Every chapter in this latest edition has a new slant to it. The chapter on metaphor includes more ways of eliciting and working with metaphor as the language of change. The section on modelling, which is the heart of NLP, includes more cross-cultural examples and non-verbal ways of modelling excellence. The significance, purpose and application of clean questioning are included alongside precision questions so that each enhances the other. And I've incorporated something that's been present in the way that NLP has been taught for years and yet is so obvious it's been overlooked, humour and provocative therapy. I've also written new material on how we represent time and how we can use that representation to enrich our experience in the present. I'm aware that many trainers use NLP at work as their course material, and thank you, as do I. To help with this, I've included more summary checklists with steps for students and chapters on outcomes and perceptual positions. 
over the years, NLP has been misunderstood and misused. Specifically, I believe, through an overemphasis on technique, we've looked too much at the finger rather than what the finger is pointing at. To redress the balance, I've simplified some of the original chapters on techniques. However, the main reason for a third edition is that what I wrote in both the first and second editions, I now view and use with the seasoning of age, faith and experience. I've appreciated applications and nuances that were limited by my own immaturity when I wrote that first draft all those years ago. And the world's changed. No, it hasn't changed. The only things that are certain are uncertainty and mortality. And NLP has been a means for me to learn to live with both. If I were to prioritise the learning I encourage in my students, it's the ability to embrace a state of unknowing, to live in the present, and to open themselves with every pore of their body to feedback. Well, that's become even more relevant today. I'm often asked if NLP translates into other cultures, and I reply, it's about culture. It's about our individual and collective culture. NLP is a means of respecting and embracing difference. And when asked recently how I in brackets, sell NLP to other cultures, I replied, I don't. I use NLP to learn about the beauty and the uniqueness of other cultures and to help those whose culture it is to learn about the structure of what they have in a way that enables them to share it freely with others. What I want you to gain from reading, reading this new edition is a sense of wonder and mystery. There's always more to learn. If you finish the book with more questions and answers, if something touches you and your emotions well up, if the hairs on the back of your neck stand unexpectedly on end and your face starts to flush, or if you're inspired to know and experience more, then my writing has been a success. Let me now get out of the way and allow you to get on with your reading, or in this case, listening. You'll find lots more on my website, www.sunite.com where you have the opportunity to let me know what you think. And I really value your opinions. So I wrote that preface in September 2009. So I'll pause there and then I will do as a separate recording the first chapter, which is what is NLP? Oh, it's a pretty good question. It challenges lots of people how to explain it.